Hello everyone. Welcome back again to Lead Coding. Today we are here with a very interesting problem called Divisor Game. This problem is very famous in companies such as Google and Microsoft. So we will be going through a series of solutions solving this problem. Initially we will start with a simple naive recursive problem then we will try to convert that into a dynamic programming problem which will be solving the problem in big O of n square. So from exponential we will be going to big O of n square using dynamic programming and then using dynamic programming we will try to optimize this from n square to n raised to the power 3 by 2 and then finally we will move on to the trick part which is big O of 1 solution to the problem so please watch the complete video and let us dive into the problem it is given that there are two players Alice and Bob which are playing a game so they are given a number n initially and that number could be replaced by another number x which could be greater than 0 and is smaller than n at the same time it should divide n completely so we can replace the number n with another number that is n minus x so each player take turns alternately and then Alice is starting the game first first it is Alice starting the game she is going to play optimally and then the turn will be passed on to Bob now Bob will make the same move and he will also play optimally. This way we have to tell that well whether Alice can win the game or not. Let's try to implement this using recursion as we don't know anything about mathematics yet. So we will move on to that. But now we are solving this using dynamic programming. For that we need a recursive solution. Now it is also given that if a player cannot make a move, then that player loses the game. What do we mean by a player cannot make a move? So making a move means choosing a number x that is greater than 0 and is smaller than n and that divides n completely so there is always the possibility of choosing 1 because 1 divides any number but if n is given to be 1 that means that we cannot choose 1 also the number should be greater than 0 and it should be smaller than 1 so that means that uh, there is no such number which we can choose so if the number is 1 that means that we are stuck and we will lose the game in all the other cases we have possibility of choosing certain numbers we are going to choose them each so we will see that if we choose i is equals to 1 then i we will choose from 1 to n and i plus plus now if we choose i is equals to 1 and it leads the current player to win so if this is the case and it is leading us to win then we are going to choose this if it is not leading us to win then we will go for another possibility and try with that so this is what we mean by playing optimally we will go to each of the possibility that we have in our hand and we will go uh, forward with that possibility we will lead us to win the game eventually so a player X winning the game means that the player Y should lose the game let me explain that so if we can choose this particular i, uh, we can only choose this when it is dividing the given number n. So if we can choose this and if the next player, next player is going to get this n minus i as the number which is on board. Now if the next player loses the game with n minus i, that means that we are winning the game. In another terms, we have n with us and let's say we choose a particular i. Now the next number with that we are going to write on the board instead of n is n minus i. This n minus i will be given to the next player. So that's what we are doing here. In case this turns out to be true, that means the next player is winning. Uh, once he is getting n minus i, he is going to win the game. We will obviously not go for this option. So in that case, we will keep iterating through the for loop and we will search for that possibility that makes the next player lose the game and then we will go on with that one. In case we are not able to find any of the possibility which makes the next player lose the game, then we are going to return zero. This is the recursive solution. Let us try to run this on certain test cases. Return help of n.
okay it is working fine now what do we expect from the solution obviously it is going to give us time limit exceeded so let's not wait for that I know that it is going to give us TLA what I will do I will make a DP of size 101 see we got TLE now why I'm taking 101 is because the n is given to be 1000 there's repetition in this problem so if you want to see repetition let us take an example to prove that as well let's say the number is 8 the number is 8 so one is a possibility that we can choose then 2 then 4 and then 8 is not an option so these are the three possibilities this will give them the, okay this was the player 1 playing the game now the player 2 will play the game and he will get he will get 7 because 8 minus 1 is 7 then he will get 6 and then he will get 4 now this now the second player for 7 he can choose I think he can only choose 1 so he will go with 6 okay no another option now 6 we will be able to choose 1 2 and 3 so 6 minus 1 is 5 then another option 6 minus 2 is 4 then another option is 3 now this 4 I don't think we have to go further because we already see repetition 4 over here 4 over here 6 over here and 6 over here so once we calculated 6 using this one why should we go and calculate 6 using the same steps here so that will be a waste of time that's why we are we are caching these we are using dynamic programming for this so I'm going to initialize my DP array with minus 1 mem set DP minus 1 size of DP if DP of I is not calculated it should be DP of N if it is calculated then we have to return DP of N we won't be calculating this again if it is not calculated we are going to calculate this and then store it yeah now let us try to run this it will give us the answer but it is still not fast enough there is a slight optimization that we can do we know that the factors that we are calculating here we are actually traversing from 1 to n and we are checking for each number whether it is a factor of n or not so instead of doing that we can simply search for the factors now how can we know the factors of a number the factors there's always a property that they follow let's say the number is 16 the factor of 16 is 1 so 16 multiplied by 1 is equals to 16 then 2 multiplied by 8 is equals to 16 4 multiplied by 4 is equals to 16 after 4 you won't find anything so you don't have to go beyond 4 if we say let's calculate this for 8 so 1 into 8 is equals to 8 2 into 4 is equals to 8 then you won't get anything after that after that you will simply get 4 into 2 and then 8 into 1 so that is same and here also you will get uh, 8 into 2 and then 16 into 1 so that is again the same thing so we have to run the loop from i is equals to 1 i is smaller than under root of n smaller than equals to under root of n so this is what we are supposed to do we are going only till 4 when n is 16 we are only going till 2 when n is 8 so instead of here running the entire n loop o of, o of n loop we are running big o of under root n loop so this is the optimization 
from i is equals to 1 i instead of root n i am doing i into i there's the same thing i into i is more than equals to n i plus plus now if this is the case then there will be two factors so the first factor is the number the second is n divided by the number so let's say the i is 2 so i will be dividing 2 one factor is 2 the other factor will be n divided by 2 n divided by 2 will be 16 divided by 2 which is 8 so these are the two factors and we will have to check for each of them if help of n minus n divided by i if this is 0 then we have to return dp of n is equals to 1 hmm now we will try to run this so our solution went from exponential to n square from n square to to wrong answer let us see why the answer is wrong i is equals to 1 i is smaller than equals to n it is giving us true for something that is false okay i got this hmm. because we should not choose we should not choose n so when n when i was 1 when i was equals to 1 the other fact that we get is n divided by i which is equals to 16 so we should not choose 16 because it is not allowed so this is only possible when i is not equals to 1 let me try this for 3 mm, there's some difficulty in balancing the parenthesis hmm. now it should give us the correct answer so we, we went from exponential to n square from n square to n raised to the power 3 by 2 and it is the fastest that we can get using dynamic programming now I am going to show you another tricky part instead of doing any of these things there is a very 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 simple solution to this problem you just have to return n modulus 2 is equals to 0 yeah and you are done with this so this is what most of the interviewers are looking for but you should be able to explain that why is this thing working now let us move on to the explanation part of this first of all what do you mean by just writing n modulus 2 is equals equals to 0 this will return us true in case n is equals to even number this will return us a 0 or false when n is an odd number so we are saying that Alice which is playing the game first is going to win if n is even she's going to lose the game when n is odd how can we prove this first of all let us see when Alice is having the number as 1 and n is equals to 1 and Alice is starting the game so Alice will lose because there's no possibility to further move from 1 now let us move to the next thing when n is equals to 2 now when Alice is starting with n is equals to 2 what Alice can do Alice can simply subtract 1 from this and then she will pass on 2 minus 1 that is 1 to Bob and then Bob will lose the game so Alice being clever uh, she's playing the game optimally and she will subtract 1 from 2 and then she'll pass on 1 to Bob and then Bob will lose the game so Alice is going to win so 
having a number n is equals to 3 the only possibility that we have of choosing x is 1 because we cannot choose 2 we had 1 and 2 as options and the only factor is 1 so we will be able to choose only 1 and then we will subtract 1 from 3 that will give us 2 and 2 will be passed on to Bob using 2 Bob is going to win the game that will make us lose the game again when we have n equals to 4 Alice is very very clever and she is going to subtract 1 from this and she will pass 3 to Bob now using 3 Bob is going to lose so Alice win win if we have 5 n is equals to 5 the options are again the option is again only one so it will be a loss now let's say we have any odd number let's say we have any odd number for that matter we will be able to get its factors or numbers only because the factors of odd is only odd it will either be one or three or five so these are the only factors which are possible for any odd number there will be no even factor for an odd number now if we subtract an odd from odd that will give us the resultant number to be an even number and we uh, already saw that using an even number we will always win the game so using an odd number we are always going to lose the game so this is the conclusion using this induction that is why we can simply write if n is even then Alice will win the game. If n is odd, then Alice is going to lose the game. Comment down below what kind of videos do you want in future and if you want some lectures of specific topics, then please comment them down below. Another series which I am thinking of is related to mathematics. There I will discuss the bit manipulation and then certain problems related to bit manipulation. This is a very trending interview topic the bit manipulation and it is very easy to solve certain problems using bit manipulations so if you have any suggestions as to how should i make these videos and what are the topics that i should cover up in the upcoming videos or do you want anything related to competitive programming please just comment down below whatever you feel like and don't forget to leave a thumbs up thank you